My friends, may the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Good morning. Welcome to worship among this people who are First Church of Christ in Mansfield, Congregational United Church of Christ, where we boldly proclaim that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are indeed welcome here. And we gather together today on this last day in the liturgical year when we celebrate Christ the Servant King, our God who rules through serving others. And so as we center ourselves in the Spirit today, let us hear these words from Julie. Good morning, First Church family. The words in this morning's centering speak to the need for all of us to be shepherds and to be shepherded by each other, to offer shelter to one another. Beyond watching over sheep, the word shepherd is defined as an individual who protects, guides, or carefully watches over a person or group of people. Qualities that make a good shepherd are protective and nurturing. If we are shepherd leaders, we relate to our people with genuine care, and we assure them that they and their ideas matter. We are dedicated to helping them succeed. Shepherd leadership comes from our heart. It is a genuine desire to serve others. When we lead through service for one another, we reveal our heart. In her 2019 Shelter Musing, the author Ganilla Norris wrote, Here in New England, winter cold surrounds us. We need warmth to protect us not just from the freezing weather, but also from the iciness of disregard. We are vulnerable beings that need each other's care. When the power goes out, no lights, no heat, and no way to cook food, sometimes no water, our shelter is shaken. We have a chance to feel the truth of our basic vulnerability. That is a good thing because we can then remember to embrace a deeper sense of shelter, the companionship of others. The truth is that we need the shelter of each other's wings. What feels like shelter, other than a roof over our heads, is different for each of us. For some, it is being remembered and visited. For others, it may be having precious time alone. For still others, it is a connection to spirit or the shelter of our prayers. These are all important. When we take care to shelter our deep need, we are more apt to shelter others as they need. A huge gift of shelter we can give one another is acceptance. Different from approval, acceptance is the generosity of spacious inclusion. We all belong to the whole of life in some way. Acceptance is the dynamic practice of giving one another a sense of equal belonging and therefore of shelter. It is important to celebrate and be grateful for people like Martin Luther King and the like who have risked their lives for others. Their courage and actions have given shelter to countless people in ways that has changed history. Let's not forget them or that we can be inspired by them to take meaningful, sheltering action. Some people can only feel sheltered behind a thick wall, either along a physical border or around an inner vulnerability no one may touch. To seek shelter in agreements, in mutual goals, and in kindness is safer in the long run, but it takes effort and guts. I usually think of shelter as something that will hold me a good long while, Imagine what would happen if every one of us daily gave conscious shelter to someone. Wouldn't the atmosphere of fear and distrust lift a little? It's not hard in thought and simple actions to contribute something toward the shelter and care of someone. It simply requires willingness and a personal decision to begin. We can be about significant change one small step at a time. We have all met lighthouse people at one time or another in our lives. They emit such good vibes, they give shelter just by being. Here's a great quote from Anne Lamott. Lighthouses don't go running all over an island looking for boats to save. They just stand there shining. There are so many books out now about the benefit of decluttering, how it gives us more space in our dwellings and more freedom in our beings. The extra coat in the closet is not giving shelter to anyone. It's time to give it away. Every day is a day to share our extras, an extra smile, an extra hand, an extra meal. In sharing our extras, there will often come a felt sense of more freedom and more space. In addition to those whom we are shepherding, the beneficiaries of such shelter are also ourselves. 
In our gospel for today, Jesus continues his parable of the last things. When the Son of Man comes in glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And so friends, I wonder, when in the past week have we ignored the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked one, the imprisoned one? You raised up Jesus, O God, and seated him at your right hand as the shepherd and king who seeks out what is lost, binds up what is wounded, and strengthens what is weak. Empowered by the Spirit, grant that we may share with others, that we may receive from your hand, to the glory of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And friends, let us join together in singing the words of the doxology. Our scripture this morning comes to us from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from other people and gather them from the countries and I will bring them into their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost. I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder, and butted at all the weak animals with your thorns until you scattered them far away. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged. I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them, and he shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be the prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. My friends, this is the testimony of Israel. Thanks be to God. And let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Come and light in our hearts the fire of your love. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable to you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So during one's second year of seminary, it is expected that one take part in something that is variously called supervised ministry or contextual education or field ed, all of which just boils down to applying what has been learned in the preceding 12 months and putting it into practice in some ministry setting. While most students work in churches, others serve in nonprofits or hospital chaplaincies or even as research assistants, depending on their vocational plans. Me, I chose to work with and learn from a small congregation of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ in San Carlos, California, a church that truly embodied the motto, a small but mighty congregation. In addition to preaching and teaching and worship leadership, second year students were to meet with a mentor each week and to reflect on our experiences, on what had gone well, and what were our growing edges. I was blessed with a, a fantastic mentor, one who was an active listener and a probing questioner. He provided excellent feedback and nurtured my journey from a Catholic congregant to a Protestant pastor. Wanting to honor my Catholic heritage, my mentor asked me to take part in a Good Friday Stations of the Cross through the Haight-Ashbury neighborhood. So on that day, when we remember the death of Jesus, he, I, and about 50 other worshipers processed through the streets that are now a, a strange mix of their counterculture history and the evolving gentrification symbolized by an enormous gap store right there on the corner of Haight Street and Ashbury Street. As we were walking and singing and praying, carrying a large wooden cross on the sidewalk, a heckler began to follow us, baaing at us. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Ba! For by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Ba! The implication, of course, was that we were all just sheep, mindlessly following where nefarious church leaders were leading, unable to think for ourselves, simply bleating merrily along disengaged from the world. It was meant to be an insult, a mocking interruption of our worship that day, but to be honest, I kind of liked it. Not the part about being an uncritical thinker or a disengaged believer, because I believe true Christianity is neither of those things. But this image of being a sheep. Because in the Bible, sheep are metaphors for those who are cared for, who are looked after, and who are loved. The image of God as shepherd and the people or the nation as sheep was not a new one. Ezekiel not only drew on King David's by then famous psalm, but the wider ancient Near East's understanding of all kings as shepherds, individuals entrusted with the welfare of those they ruled. This was a perfectly natural understanding given their origins as nomadic shepherds, wandering the fertile crescent with their flocks. And so Ezekiel subverts this image of pastoral kingship. The people Human kings in that time were bad shepherds, leading their flocks astray. While God is the good shepherd, the one leading and guiding them safely home. For weeks now, we've been hearing of ancient Israel's cycles of faithlessness, which was understood to bring about God's wrath and punishment, and renewed faithfulness, which was understood to bring about a return to God's favor, salvation, and rescue from punishment. And Ezekiel becomes a prophet during the beginning of another one of these cycles. By this point in its history, the Israelites have become unified under a single king in Saul and in David, only to be split apart into two kingdoms following David's death. The, the northern kingdom of Israel with its capital of Samaria, and the southern kingdom of Judah with its capital of Jerusalem. And as if civil war was not bad enough, the kingdoms eventually become conquered by the foreign nations of Assyria and eventually Babylon. Each of these wars 
Each of these conquests was believed to be the consequence of the nation's strain from God and from God's ways. Each was understood to be a rejection by God of a people who had themselves rejected the Lord. And while Ezekiel does indeed that ju- proclaim that judgment is coming, that Israel and Jerusalem and even the temple itself will fall, God's rejection of the people will not last forever. For God, God is the shepherd of Israel, entrusted with its nurture, entrusted with its care. What I find so interesting in this text is the way it connects God's care of Israel with justice. In it, God is pictured as feeding the sheep, leading them to good pasture, providing for them a safe place to rest. God, as shepherd, seeks out the lost, brings back the strays, and strengthens the weak. But God also sends the strong and the fattened away, those who have taken more than they need to survive while others are sick and wandering. These ones, they're destroyed. Leading the sheep to a home of their own also means that the shepherd is going on ahead of them to to fill in the potholes, to clear away the brambles, to ensure that the sheep are not becoming injured in the first place. So often, particularly in this holiday season, we people of goodwill can get so caught up in acts of care and acts of charity. We buy sweatpants for the no freeze and make donations to Wayne's Walk for Warmth. We fill out our stewardship pledge card and adopt a family to support with gifts for Christmas. And friends, all of this is good. All of this is holy. All of this is the feeding, the caring, the providing for in this morning's text. But it also reminds us that we need to be equally attentive to the other aspect of the text this morning, to the acts of justice as well as charity, to asking the questions of why there are homeless people in our community in the first place, of how we are complicit in an economy where some cannot afford heat, of why minimum wage workers do not earn a living wage which entitles them to beauty in addition to bread. We are compelled to ask these questions and then to work for systemic change to address them, to advocate for affordable housing and to promote a living wage, to alter public policy and to live in such a way that our taking less or paying more may mean another has enough. Ezekiel reminds us that justice and care are two sides of the same coin. They're two expressions of the same love. My friends, as we mark this last Sunday of the church here, as we approach our national day of thanksgiving, may we care for those most in need. May we work for a more just world. And may we know and live the love of the Good Shepherd who brings us all safely home. Amen. Friends, let us pray. O Lord our God, we pray for the church. As you have made Christ the head of all, help us to live faithfully as his body, continuing his mission in the world. O Lord our God, we pray for the earth. Let all the earth make a joyful noise to you, a song of praise to the rock of our salvation. For you are coming to reveal a new creation. 
O Lord our God, we pray for all nations. Drive out those wolves in sheep's clothing who abuse the weak and scatter the flock. Come to us, bring justice, and bring peace. O Lord our God, we pray for this community. Help us to see Christ among our neighbors, serving those who are hungry and thirsty, naked and lonely, sick or in prison. O Lord our God, we pray for loved ones. Remember the people of your pasture. Rescue the lost, bind up the broken, comfort the mourning. Especially we pray for Don Baxter as he grieves the death of his father. Heal the sick, feed those who hunger. Loving shepherd, lead and guide us in green pastures and by still waters, in right paths and through dark valleys, until we feast with you in glory and dwell in your home forever. We ask this through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our offering hymn this morning is My Shepherd You Supply My Need. And as the hymn tra- offers this gift to us, let us consider the gifts that we will offer for the ministry and mission of Christ's Church here in Mansfield. Those gifts can be sent in through our website at myfcc.info or through our P.O. Box, P.O. Box 36 in Mansfield Center. Now, my friends, let us go forth from this time together in peace. Let us be courageous, holding on tight to all that is good. Let us not return evil for evil, but help the weak, strengthen the faint-hearted, 
Let us love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And let us know that the blessing of God, the one who creates us, who redeems us, and who sustains us, goes with us this day and all days. Amen. My friends, let us indeed go forth in peace. Amen.